Hey there, it's Paul. Today we're going to look at getting data from a HTTP server. I've created a standard express application that has two messages, one with an ID of one and the message of hello Ionic, the second that says and this is another message with an ID of two. We can take a look at the response in Chrome and we can see we have the two messages inside of our web page as expected returned as JSON objects. Now to look at this inside of our Ionic 3 application, we need to make a new app to start with. So Ionic start HTTP blank dash dash V2. When you've done that, we can create a new provider. So usually if you're gonna do any sort of HTTP calls, you would put it to your own service. So the service within the Ionic 2 application. So to do this and make our own provider, we can run Ionic G provider and then the name of our provider. So my service is going to be called message service. So inside of our Ionic 2 project under the source folder, we now have a provider named message service. To use this inside of our application, we need to add it to the list of providers. So let's import from providers slash message dash service, we want to import the message service. We can then add this to the list of providers. And when it comes to lazy loading our providers, you don't have to add it on a module basis if you want it to be on the global app module. So we're simply gonna add message service here regardless of whether we're using lazy loading or not. We'll also need to implement the HTTP module from Angular. So we can import from at angular slash http, we can import the http module. We then have to add it to our imports within our application. If we take a look at the http module, we can see that it includes http's providers so that we don't have to implement a lot of manual stuff when we want to use http within our project. So back over to our message service, we can change the public HTTP inside of our constructor to be private because we only want to access the HTTP variable inside of this service. We can then make a function named get messages and then inside of our get messages function, we can say this.http and then we have a variety of HTTP options such as get, post, put and so on. We're going to be using get because we're going to be getting the data from the server and we have to pass in a URL here. The URL is of type string so we are going to make a variable at the top which is going to be private URL of type string and that's going to be equal to HTTP localhost 3000. The value localhost 3000 is where my API resides. This is of course going to be different for you. So put in the web address that you're looking to get the data from. We can then pass the URL inside of all this.http.get. So this.url. And we can return this to our component. Now a common thing to do at this stage rather than doing it inside your component is to map the data to a new object or array. Before we do that, let's add the do operator. So let's import rxjs add operator do. And that allows us to have a look at the data before we do anything to it. So we can say dot do and then basically have the response and console.log the response. So I'm gonna head over to my app pages and inside home.ts, I'm gonna import the provider. So we can import from providers the message service and we can inject the message service inside of our constructor and we can make a get messages function. So get messages and let's use this dot message service dot get messages and we can subscribe to that event and we can log out the response object. Then inside of our constructor, we can run this dot get messages. And when this homepage loads, it will get the messages from the message service. Let's run this in the browser by running Ionic serve. So the first thing that we see when we open up our application in the browser is two response objects. One that comes from the dot do. So we're logging out the response and two comes from the subscribe data that we log out here. 
So the dot do is essentially at the moment giving us the same response as we expect it to. We're simply looking at what the data looks like at that time. But now we want to map the data to only return the body because we don't really care about this URL status text. We might care about the status later on, but at the moment we only care about the body. So inside of the message service, we can pull in the response from Angular HTTP and we can tell our do function that the response object is of type response. And we can do the same for the map function that we're about to add to the HTTP get. This means is that we're going to map the response to a new object or array based on the transformations that we make to the object. So we saw inside of the response that it has a response body. So it would be good if we could simply only return the body of the response because we don't want all this extra information. We just want to return an array which contains both of the messages. So instead we can map this response to only return the response.json. If we save this and instead we run it again, our objects that come back are only the response body of ID1, hello Ionic, and ID2, this is another message. You'll notice that we still are getting the response.do, and that's because we're logging out the initial response that is unchanged by any of the map. And then after we're logging that out, we're mapping the data to the new response object. Now at this stage, our HTTP get function is getting a little long. So let's change this and refactor it out to different functions. So we'll make a private log response and that's going to have a parameter of response, a type response, and we're simply going to log out the response. And we can change our do function to this.log response. Next, we can have the map function, which extracts the data from the response. So extract data, response of type response. And then we can return the response.json. One of the other things that we can do when returning HTTP data from a server is catch an error because there could be a variety of errors that could happen. So we can use the dot catch function. Now this comes as part of RxJS. So we have to import it from RxJS slash add slash operator slash catch. We can then write a function named catch error and it returns an error of type response, but if there's no error of type response, maybe it returns an any. At the moment, we are simply going to console.log the error, so log out any errors that might happen. And if there is an error, we're going to return the observable.throw method, which throws an exception within the observable. So to use observable.throw, we can import observable from rxjs slash observable. And then we can throw the error.json cause it's a response object dot error. Or if there's no error, we can simply say server error. The final thing to do is to hook this up to our catch method. So we can add this dot catch error. If we save this and run it back on our application, we can now see that we have the expected response of ID1 and message hello Ionic, ID2 and message this is another message. Let's wire this up to our view. Inside home.html, I'm going to change the title to messages and the color of our navbar to primary. Inside of our ion content, I'm going to have an ion list and each item in the list is going to be a message. So at the ion list element, we can use ng4 message of message list. And the item can have a message.id and then a message.message .message, because that reflects our data model. We also need to add let before our message here to say that we're making a new variable. So inside of our home.ts, we can make a message list and it's going to be a new array. 
So we can take the response object that we get from our subscription to get messages, and instead of logging it out, we can say this dot message list is equal to the data. If we now take a look at this inside of our application, we can see the ID of one and hello Ionic, ID of two, this is another message. If we take a look inside of our console, we can see that we're still logging out our response object. And that's because we're doing it inside the do block inside of our get messages. It might be a good idea to only log out the body so we can quickly see the results of our get call to our API. I'm gonna go back to the message service and I'm gonna put the dot do underneath the dot map. So it maps the data first and then we can log out the response. If we take a look at this inside of the browser, we can see we get the results after mapping the object. Now we can use the dot do multiple times and we can do things without actually changing the observable that is returned. So if we initially, inside of our first dot do, log the response, and then after the data is mapped, we log the response again, we can see two different outcomes. So the first outcome is the initial response prior to any mapping. And the second log is the response object after it has been mapped to only return the JSON body. So the awesome thing about using dot do to log is that it doesn't change the return response to the subscription observable at all. Using this, if we then changed our API to add a third message, for example, ID three message, final message, and then we refresh our application, we can see the third message. This third message is reflected inside of our initial response as well as our mapped response. I hope this video helped in understanding HTTP within Angular as well as some RxJS observable functions. To stay updated with more videos, hit that subscribe button and until next time, I'll see you in the next video.